Welcome to Lemons.com. In this video, we will look at how to configure two basic security features in Cisco Nexus 1000V, that is access control list, and port security. ACLs on Nexus 1KV can be applied at the port level and control both input and output traffic. Port security, on the other hand, is almost identical to the traditional Cisco switches. We will later in this lab also perform MAC flooding just to see how the port security react to that. Here's our lab setup. Here we have a domain controller installed at the IPF.40 and VLAN32. We have a test machine, which is a domain computer on VLAN64, which we will be doing some basic testing on. At the same time, we have a malicious machine that we will be doing Mac flooding from, which is running Ubuntu OS on the same VLAN. And then we will be configuring the ACL and port security in the port profile VM VLAN64, which will get applied at the port or interface that these uh, machines are running on. Okay, so in the background here, we have a syslog server running just so we can capture some of the logs that's coming from the switch. So the first thing we do is to configure access control list. So the command is access list. If the question mark, you no longer have to do standard extended if you're familiar with those syntax in the Catalyst iOS. And go ahead and give it a name, which is, since it's going to be applied to VLAN 64, we'll call it from VLAN 64, from indicated the inbound or input direction to the port. The question mark, the option is pretty much the same as any other switch. So you can do like remark just to give your comment. So let's say we can start off with allowing some basic application, which is DSCP and DNS. Okay, and then we can do permit. Then protocol, UDP syntax is pretty much identical to any other switch you might have worked on. For DSCP, here's the client port, and then we do any, and then the server ports then we can do permit edp any any equal 53 which is dns and then since we know that this machine is a domain machine and needs to talk to a domain controller we can just say it, permit ip any host 172.16.32.40 then we can deny the machine from talking to anything else on the 172.16 vlan and here you can do a shorthand version of subnet mask by doing a slash 12. And then you can also specify a lock option as well if you like. Okay, and then at the end, we just want it to go to internet. So permit IP any any. Okay, you can see there's also option for DSCP and precedence if you want to match those. Enter. And so we did deny, we did permit, we did remark. And the last thing you want to do is statistic if you want to enable the hit counts on each of the ACL entry, so statistic per entry, okay. And just to enable some locking, we have locking IP access list, cache, see interval, 10. So they specify how long it takes before the switch will aggregate or issue an aggregate lock entry for the ACL. So let's say we want that to happen every 10 seconds. Okay, and then we can also lower the locking level for ACL log to seven. Maybe to show access list, you can see right here, just do a quick check and make sure everything looks good. And then before we apply that to the port profile, we're gonna go to our test machine on the Win7 test one and then start doing some ping. So first thing we want to ping is internet. Let's see, we can currently ping the IP, and then second, we can ping the default gateway. As you can see, that's pingable. And while we have those running, let's go back and apply that to the port profile. VM VLAN 64, and the command to apply that is IP port access group from VLAN 64, the question mark here is where you specify the direction of the packet. We are doing inbound, so specify as in, and then enter. And you can see almost immediately, we got some locking messages in the background here. And if you do show access list, we got some matches as well. So if you go back to our test machine, you can see the ping to internet is still working while the ping to the default gateway has already been lost.
And this is because we are not explicitly allowing pings nor any communication to the default gateway on our access list. Just to generate more traffic, or let's see, let's do show access list summary. Okay, there you go. It tells you when you apply the access list to port profile, the exact ports that the port profile is assigned to. So the, currently our access list from VLAN 64 are taking effect on these three particular V Ethernet port, 15, 16, and 17. Okay, so just to generate more traffic, we're going to ping, let's say, google.com just to generate uh, DNS traffic. And so you can ping that since it's internet IP. Let's also try to do IP config renew just to generate some DSCP packet. You can see that came back successfully pretty quickly as well. So we go back to the switch and show access list. You can see each of these entries now have a match. Since we did the DSCP renews, so we're going to match of one here. We did a ping to Google, so we got some DNS match as well. Here is the communication to the domain controller. And here is the anything else is being denied going towards the 17216 subnet. And everything else, which is our ping to internet, has been permit. It's got some match as well. Okay, so now let's go back to, you can also do term on just to capture the lock here, but we can just, let's stop the ping real quick. So we stop generating all these locks. And let's go look, look at this aggregate lock entries. Let's see if we can kind of expand this. Just kind of see the whole thing. So you can see, just compare between these two right here. You still can't really see the whole thing here. Let me see. This is very long. Okay. And these locks are being generated because of the deny from the IP 64.34, which is our test machine going towards 64.1, which is the ping that we did to the default gateway. I can see these locks is being generated every pretty much 10 seconds, just like we specified the interval on our command line. So for example, right here from 51 second to one second, 11 second and 21 second. Okay, so we are pretty much done with the ACL. Now let's move on to the port security. Okay, so before we start, let's clear the syslog server and let's try to find which feed ethernet our malicious machine is connected on our second test machine and we can do virtual here you go it's on the ethernet 15 for lm dash ubuntu 1 here we do show mac address interface v15 you can see right now there's only one mac address which is the machine itself and you can also do show mac address count which is the total mac address in the cam table at this point which is 53. okay so what we're going to do is to run a quick attack before we even configure port security and see what what we can observe here so let's bring up the test machine log in and the tool that we're going to be using is called mac off so the command is macof and we just specify the number of packets you want the tool to generate. So basically this tool will generate this many packet with random source MAC address. Okay, so we go ahead and enter. You can see right here, create a whole lots of packets with random source MAC address. And now if you go back to the switch and do the same command, MAC address 15, you can see before we had one MAC address and now we have tons of those. A thousand to be exact because it's how many MAC address we tell the tool to generate. And now if you go back and do the show MAC address count, you can see it went from a 65 to 1065. Okay, so that is without the port security. So let's go and clear the MAC address table. And let's just do dynamic VLAN 64. And now we bring the MAC address count down to 51. I'm sure, we'll come back up. But um, we just delete other MAC addresses on VLAN 64. Okay, so start our configuration with error, some error disable command. So if the port ever go into error disable state and you want it to recover automatically, um, for example, if you decide to shut down the port when the violation happens, then if you don't want to leave the port shut down, you can configure recovery period. So that's what we're going to do. I mean, if you want to keep the port shut down and allow, uh, requires the manual intervention for the admin, then, then you don't need to configure this. 
right here, I just want to show that we can configure the port uh, recovery with the port secure violation. And for the recovery period or an interval, with the interval, you have an option to specify number of seconds the port will stay down for. Let's do the minimum here, which is 30. Okay, now we can start configuring our port security on the port profile. Okay, so the port profile that we are working on here is still VLAN 64. So the command is switch port, port security. Okay, just to enable the port security, you, you just enter that. And then you can do port security maximum. And this is the maximum of uh, number of MAC address you want to allow to be on the port. So you can go from one to 1025. If you're familiar with the physical switch, for example, if you have like an IP phone and, IP and a computer connected off that, then you probably want to do two or three. But here, since we're in virtual environment, there might not be a reason to allow more than one MAC address, uh, unless you want to allow your user to run things like a virtual machine inside it. So here is why we choose a one, and we want that to be applied in all VLANs. And we do some switch port, port security. For the violation, you have three options, just like again, the physical switch, protect, restrict, and shut down. It depends uh, what kind of action you want the switch to take, whether it's to drop the packet or drop the packet silently and drop the, drop the packet, then generate the loss, which is shut down the port. So here we do the violation shutdown. And let's see what other options we have. The aging. Okay, so aging, you have type and time. So with aging type, you can say it, how long it takes before the MAC address is removed from the port. And this is if whether it's based on absolute timer and activity timer. So absolute timer can specify the exact period of time where you want the MAC address to be removed as opposed to in activity. The switch will wait until the MAC address become idle for that period of time before it removes the MAC address. So for us, we'll do the type in activity. And now you have to specify the time, the period of time that you want for the timer. So let's say 10 minutes. You can see here it's not second, it's minutes. So enter. Let's take a quick look at what we have so far before we start testing again. So show run port profile VM VLAN 64. Okay, so we have port security enabled with the maximum MAC address of one. The violation is shut down, which is the default. That's why it doesn't show up here. The aging type is int activity and the aging time is 10 minutes. Okay, and you can also do command show port security. And we see that it's been applied to the three interfaces, 15, 16, and 17, and currently 15 and six, uh, 17 sees one uh, MAC address. You see action is shut down. And so far there's no violation occurs, so the count remains zero. Okay, now that we have the port security enabled on those same ports, let's launch another attack or MAC flooding. Okay, so just gonna up arrow here and enter. All right, so that's done. You can see there's a lot of locking activities going on here, basically for every MAC address that exceeds the, the maximum number you specify, it gets locked. Okay, so if you look at the lock here, it said port security violation MAC, maximum MAC address VLAN on a port via Ethernet 15, which is where our attacker machine is on and it moved into a shutdown state. So we have to be quick before, I guess we did a, there you go. I think that the 30 second has passed. That's why it came up by itself. So let's do that one more time. All right, while well, that's happening, let's issue a bunch of quick commands and then we'll review it. Show port security, show port security, interface VLAN of uh, Ethernet 15, and then show interface V15, okay? So just wanna do that before the port comes back up. So let's review that real quick. So as far as number of MAC address before we were at 51 and now we at 53. So you can see instead of the MAC address become like a thousand, see here the port just came back up. So now the port security kinda did this job and not allowing more MAC address than it's supposed to. So we are good with this. And now with the port show port security command, 
And you can see the number of violations that happens on VEthernet 15 right here. And that's when the port uh, starts to shut down. And when you do a command show port security interface VLAN 15, you can see the port status is secure down with all the settings that we did, 10 minute aging timer, and as well as the security violation counts. And finally, when we look at the show interface V Ethernet 15, you can see the status of the port is down and this error disabled because of the port security violation. Okay, you can see, let's see if we can show it right here. Basically, it, it was shut down at the 49 seconds and then at the around 08, which is about 30 seconds later, the port automatically recovered by itself. Okay, so the last thing we want to test is the V motion just to show you what happened when V motion happened. So let's move the L, uh, attacker machine, which is LM Ubuntu 1, and we'll migrate from dot four to dot six. Go. Okay, so, so the V motion is done. Let's bring back the console on this. Okay, and on the switch itself, you can see how the virtual Ethernet 15 bounds real quick and now it's get, it got moved to module four. So if you do show interface virtual Ubun, it's instead of dot four, it becomes a dot six because it got V motion off. And if you launch another attack right here, Let's see, the same thing, pretty much the same thing is happening. And that's because all the port configuration remains the same when the hose gets vMotion. So that's the main benefit of the Nexus 1000V where the uh, configuration never changed at the port level when the VM moves around. So if you show interface status, for example, error disable, you can see right here, V Ethernet 15, error disable as if nothing's or as if the VMs never moved. Okay, so you can see that the ACL can be pretty much apply anywhere. Well, the port security might not be so much applicable to the server environment because it doesn't really make sense to restrict number of MAC address on the server environment, especially with the B motion with the machine moving around and when you run the virtual environment. But it's more of a user virtual machine, like if you have like a virtual desktop and you want to enforce securities, and just like I mentioned earlier, there's not really a reason to allow any more than one MAC address since you don't really have like an IP phone anymore behind it unless you have other applications that generate its own MAC address. For example, if you allow the user to run their own virtual environment inside the VM. So the next video, we're going to look at a more advanced feature that as much applicable for the VDI environment, and that is the IP, uh, the SCP snooping, dynamic ARP inspection, and IP source guard. But for now, this should wraps up our video on Nexus 1000V on ACL and poor security. Thank you for watching labmins.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.